Hi, this is Mark Gallucci, Digital Control Incorporated. This video is going to discuss the calibration sequence. Okay, we're going to calibrate this Digitrack F5 receiver. Before we do so, let's verify a few things. I'm going to go to the locate mode screen. I'm going to click it. Okay, so now I'm verifying that the transmitter is in fact sending out signal. The receiver is set to pick up that specific frequency. I'm getting 566 counts of signal. I'm good to go. All we're going to do when we calibrate is we convert X many counts of signal, X many points of signal, to a number that we are familiar with. We all know what 120 inches are. Metric users know what 3 meters are. So that's all we're doing. We're converting signal strength to a depth number. Okay, so let's go ahead and back out of this. We verify the transmitter is working. We'll slide it over back to the calibration menu. Here we go. We'll click it. Now we have two calibration choices, a one point and a two point. The two point calibration is reserved for you when, when you're underground, the transmitter's underground. This video, we are not going to discuss the two point. We're going to discuss the one point calibration. One point calibration is the calibration you will do 99.9% .9 of the time. We'll go ahead and click the trigger. This graphic shows you the relationship that you need to have before you calibrate. We have 10 foot from the inside edge of the handheld receiver to the middle of the transmitter. Now I know this graphic does not show you, show the transmitter in the housing, but if you want to track it in the housing, you're going to want to calibrate the housing. So ensure that you have that exact distance, 10 foot or metric users, 3 meters. And also verify that you're calibrating in a clean environment, free of background electrical noise, free of passive interference, rebar, mesh, steel pipe, drill rig. You don't want to calibrate with the transmitter right next to the drill rig. Any piece of metal is going to have an effect on signal strength. The other word for signal strength, it's depth. So if you must calibrate with the drill head already screwed onto your drill pipe, Push that thing out as far as you can get it and get it as level as you can. Ideally, you go into a clean environment with the transmitter in the housing only, put it flat on the ground, keep it level, and go off to the side of it, your prescribed distance. And then you begin your calibration sequence, which I'm going to do right now. Make sure the green check is highlighted and click it. We're now measuring signal strength. At the end of this measurement cycle, It'll flash and let you know your calibration is good. There we go. Green check means it was a healthy calibration. And now we're back to the main screen. So we've got a good calibration. I'm going to go ahead and hold the trigger. And notice it says 120 inches. Guess what, folks? Had we calibrated at 5 foot, it still would say 120 inches. Had we calibrated at 15 foot, it still would say 120 inches. That 120 or 3 meters for metric users, that is the default setting. It will always say that. So again, it is imperative that when you calibrate, you do so at the exact prescribed distance and you do so in a clean area. If you calibrate in a dirty environment, you will have a dirty calibration. So the last thing, how often should you calibrate? Well, digital control says only when necessary. These boxes are designed to hold calibration shot after shot, day after day, week after week. It doesn't matter if you change the batteries in your transmitter or you change the battery in the Digitrack receiver. It will still remember its calibration. Okay? As long as this signal strength stays the same, you're not going to lose calibration. And that's why it's a very good idea. Write that number down. Know what that number is. Know your signal strength and calibration distance. Okay. So the last thing I'll tell you about calibration, I like to verify my calibration. After I calibrate at my prescribed 120 inches or 3 meters, I'll move it in or out to another distance and just make sure that the depth or distance reading is correct. I'll move it into 5 foot. What's it say? 5 foot. I'll move it out to 4.5 meters. What does it say? It says 4.5 meters. Okay. We've calibrated. We double checked that calibration. So tomorrow we'll get back on the job site. Am I going to have to calibrate again? No. Probably not. Am I going to check my calibration? Absolutely. Safety is a number one concern for digital control. 
we want to make sure that this box is healthy and reading correctly each and every time you go underground. So for most of the time, most of you, you get to the job site and you set up your transmitter on the ground, go off to the side, move it to 10 foot, make sure it says 10 foot. If it does, there is no need to recalibrate. People that try to cal er, calibrate every day, oftentimes they forget to do a background check. So they calibrate in a dirty environment, they incorporate that interference into their calibration and they've got a depth there. Okay, so that makes sense? Only calibrate when necessary, check it each and every time you go underground. So that's it for calibration. We're going to make another video that actually shows a contractor calibrating. So this one was really just to, to go over the display screen and what you're doing during the calibration cycle. Give you a little background information.